Assalamu alaikum dear young friends uh, welcome to this session of Quran for teens uh, today we'll be discussing another topic and uh, we'll present before you an assortment of verses from the Quran on the topic of charity and as I said uh, and as I've been uh, saying in the in the past as well the purpose is that uh, we are able to read the Quran uh, in a thorough way uh, by understanding the message of the Quran and uh, of course the obvious outcome of this thorough understanding is that uh, we are able to follow and practically adopt what the Quran says. So, uh, as I just said that we would start off with the, the verses uh, today which are actually verses which urge us to be charitable and generous and uh, also they warn us that there are certain things that we must not do when we are doing charity. So do remember this fact that uh, being a person who is charitable uh, is not just, uh, is just not based on the fact that you have some wealth or currency or money and then you are charitable. Charity has a number of forms uh, by giving your time, your skills, so many other things and uh, they all constitute uh, charity. So uh, the verses which we are going to read today, they have been selected from various portions of the Quran and to be exact, uh, as far as I remember, there are 12 of them uh, and these 12 verses of the Quran, they have, each of them has a specific message and if you sum up all those 12 verses, what will happen is that you'll get a complete picture or a very comprehensive picture of what the Quran would like us to do vis-a-vis -vis charity, not only do and uh, also there are certain things that the Quran wants us to abstain while we are doing charity. So it's like a comprehensive survey, a comprehensive uh, collection of directives on charity. Uh, I don't need to remind all of you how important charity is in our lives and how important it is that we share our blessings with people who are around us. It is something which is so natural. Uh, found as a, in a human being, it's a, it's a thing which we call as a human value and all human values are ingrained in human beings and uh, what happens is that at times we are not very sensitive towards them. So by studying charity in this manner, I do uh, hope and pray that our focus on charity is once again uh, revisited and revived and anything that we might be doing contrary to the etiquette which is mentioned in the Quran is checked and anything that we are doing in line with that etiquette is is actually received, uh, we receive encouragement on that from the Quran itself. So uh, if you could just open up your uh, <coughs> worksheets, uh, I'll, I'll just read out the Arabic part and I'll, exp I'll then request some of you to share with me the English translation. Okay, so here goes the first one. So the first one is a selection from uh, Surah Baqarah, which is the second surah, and this is verse 267. So the words are, Ya ayyuha amanu al ard wa la qabisa minhu tunfiqoon wa lastum bi akhizihi illa an tughmizu wa'alam وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ So, uh, I'd like to request uh, Zirak, could you just, just read the translation of, the, of this verse? Uh, believers spend from their pure wealth and from that which we have brought out of the earth for you. Mm -hmm. And don't even think of spending something worthless in the way of God, which you yourself would not receive except with close eyes. Mm -hmm. And you should know that God does not need such spending from you and he, and he is glorious. Okay. Thank you, Zirak. Now I'm going to read out the next uh, verse. So the next verse is, Ya ayyuhal lazina amanu la tubtilu sadaqatikum bil manni wal aza. Uh, and uh, so I'll ask Zoya, Bernie, could you please read out the translation? Believers do not mar your charity by reminders of generosity and by hurting the recipients. Thank you, Zoya, for that. Okay, <clears throat> now the third, so it says, In tubdus sadaqati fa ni'immahi wa in tukhfuha wa tuktuha al fuqara'a fa huwa khayrul lakum 
وَيُكَفِّرُ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ Okay, Fatima Hussain, could you please read out a translation? If you spend openly, then this too is a good thing, but to give to the poor and to give it secretly is better. Through this, God will wipe out your sins and God has knowledge of all your deeds. Thank you for that. Okay. Okay, the, uh, and please continue, uh, Fatima, with the next verse as well. Okay. Those who, in spite of being needy, give preference to the needs of others. Thank you for that. I'll actually, says, ala anfusihim And you've just rightly translated that, uh, of course, those here refer to the believers, says that in spite of being needy, they give preference to the needs of others. Okay, thank you for that. And we've just read four of these verses, so the fifth one and the sixth one I'm going to read together. The fifth says, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالذَّرَّاءِ and this is the fifth one. And the sixth one says, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ Okay, so I'd request uh, Fatima and Ariba, either, either of you. Those who spend in all circumstances, um, rather they are in ills or in hardship, mm -hmm. um, you... You shall never be truly virtuous yeah. until you spend in the way of God uh, what you die and cherish. Okay. And whatever you spend, you will definitely be rewarded for it because it is known to God. So is this Ariba or is it Fatima? Ariba. Okay, thank you for that. So. Uh, this, now we read this, this, the seventh and the eighth verses. So the seventh verse goes like this: Yes, aluna ka maza yunfiqun kul ma anfaqtum min khairin fa wal baladaini wal akrabina wal yatama wal masakini wa bin sabil wa ma tafalu min khairin fa inna Allah bihi alim. We call upon Israyan Ali. They ask you about what they should spend. Tell them whatever you spend is for your parents and kinsfolk and for the orphan and the destitute and the wayfarer of your society. Mm -hmm. Rest assured, whatever good you do will never go waste because God is fully aware of it. Okay, thank you very much, Ryan, for that. And the eighth verse is, Lil fuqara al-lazina uhsiruna fi sabili Allahi la yistati'oona yazarban fi al-ard yahsabuhum al-jahilu aghniya min al-ta'affuf ta'rifuhum bi simahum la yas'alun al-nasa il-hafa wa ma tunfiqu min khairin fa inna Allah bihi alim. Okay, I request Muhammad Azan. This spending is specifically for the poor who are standard. In the cause yeah. of God. God and are not able to travel in the land to earn their livelihood. The ignorant take them for men of wealth on account of their modest behavior. You can recognize them by their faces. They are not annoyingly insistent in begging. Help them and be aware that whatever you spend for this objective will necessarily earn reward for you because it is known to God. Thank you, Azan, for that. So <clears throat> the ninth verse is Wala Tajal Yadaka Maglulatan Ala Unukika Wala Tab Sutha Kulal Bast Fatak Uda Maluma Mahsura. I would like to uh, request Nida. Do you need a most nor most then you should be the approach of the reduced to poverty. Thank you, Nada, for that. So the tenth verse is Wa Imma to Arizana Anhu Bigaa Rahmatam Mirabika Terjuha Fakullahuma Kaulam Maisura. Okay, Ali, could you tra translate or uh, read the translation? But if while waiting for your Lord's grace, you lack the means to assist these needy, then at least speak to them only. Thank you for that, Ali. Okay, the eleventh verse is Ashaitanu Yaidukum al Fakara wa Yakmurukum bil Fahsha. And Daniel, you'll read this please. Satan threatens you with poverty and enjoins lewdness on you. Okay, thank you. And the last one is Allah Zina Yunfikuna Amvala Hum Bil Laili wa Nahari Sirrawa Alaniya 
فلهم اجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون اوكي ليت مي اس زارا برني Those who spend their wealth in the way of God by day and by night in private and in public have their reward with God and for them there shall be no fear there and nor shall the nor shall they be sorrow Okay thank you for the uh, all of all these readings uh, dear friends so now we come to these comprehension questions which uh, of course uh, was the objective of the, this reading remember as i said that these 12 verses they comprehensively cover uh, the uh, the what you can say the charity the way it is mentioned in the quran the message of the quran regarding charity and as you have been as you just read these verses i'm sure you must have noted that each of these verses or set of verses has a message to give has a point to make so the first comprehension uh, comprehension question uh, as you can see in your worksheets is that uh, if you could just list the message of these 12 verses so uh, these are in fact 12 messages each one springing from uh, each of these verses so i just like your input as to what you have understood as these uh, verses tell us vis-a-vis -vis some basic points regarding charity so as i said each of them has a special special message a specific point to make and i'll give you a few minutes you can just read them again and jot down uh, either in your head and, <clears throat> or in on a piece of paper or on your computer uh, what you think to be the 12 basic messages of these 12 verses so you can start now if you find any difficulty in any of the translated words Uh, that you might not understand you can always ask them so remember you just need to summarize uh, or pick up the gist of each of these verses and uh, see what they are primarily telling us vis-a-vis -vis charity at times a single set of verses might verses might be telling more than one thing but uh, if you just look deeply you can summarize it in in a single sentence So even if you would like to just uh, make a mental note that would be fine uh, regarding each of these verses in case you think that it's difficult for you to jot it down but those of you who finish uh, should raise their hand so let me start off uh, with those who have raised their hand so ali would you please share what you have written uh, spend uh, the way god told you to and to like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one by one, you see, uh, you've read read those twelve verses, and I'd like to let us to, to educate us on what exactly each of these verses is telling us. So, if you come to the first verse, what do you think is the message of the first verse? So concentrate on what the verse says. Uh, the, the the translation will will guide you. Uh, Spend from your pure will. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, what do you think is the what? What does pure wealth means? <clears throat> what exactly does it mean? I don't know. Okay. Uh, let us ask some of the other participants. So, uh, Zoya Bernie, what do you think that pure wealth means here? And do you think what, what exactly is the message of the first verse? Of the first? Yeah. Um so from the first what i can see is it's saying that you should be spending but you should be spending money right there's no need to hoard it there's no need to keep it all to yourself it should be freely given and freely spent to do as what you please but um based off of what the rest of it you don't have to also mm, how do i explain this? uh You don't need to spend it, you know, in the name of Allah. This is something that you can spend from yourself because Allah does not need you to spend anything. So, are you sure you're about talking about the first verse? I mean, for the first ayat that you have that is okay. on here. So, uh, do I have any other participant who might be differing from what Zoya has just said? Anyone who would have a different explanation? Well, from what I wrote, I wrote that I kind of got that you have to be meaningful in the way you spend your money, mm -hmm. and not just throw your money around. That's what I got from the first verse. Okay, 
Uh, anyone else? Nida, what did you write? I think it means that you have to give to others something that you will want to receive. Like, say for example, you cannot give something that is worthless to someone else. If not, it's not a meaningful gesture. If you should give to others out of the goodness of your heart and give them something that can help them. Okay. Okay. And uh, what about uh, Fatima Hussain? First verse, it says, spend from your pure wealth. So I think that means uh, like livelihood or money that was earned in halal ways, like not through stealing or, you know, other means that are not acceptable. So anyone who would disagree with Fatima? Because you see, uh, she's hit the nail on the head. Uh, the, the, the verses, if you read in totality, uh, just, just, just read them again. They tell you that you have to spend your wealth from your pure wealth. I mean, you spend from your pure wealth. And purity, of, of course, uh, uh, hinges on the fact that you have earned it in a halal way. For example, money which has been earned through selling liquor or maybe earning interest or the things which are prohibited, they should not, that should not be spent in charity. Pure wealth has to be uh, spent in charity. And you can see what, what these verses say, as they, uh, or this verse says as it goes on. Uh, and from that which we brought out of, of the earth for you. So in those times, you see what happened was that uh, people would plant various crops and they would come out. And remember, whenever a crop comes out, it's always in its original form. There's no adulteration. It is, you, you, you get it the way God produces it. So in other words, the, the example is that just as God produces things from the earth which are pure and you don't contaminate them, in a very similar way, things that you earn for yourselves uh, or the money that you earn from yourselves should be pure and only that pure money should be spent for the cause of God. And, and the verse goes on to say, is, which means that uh, uh, you don't think of spending something worthless. Uh, and which you would not even like for your own self. As you see, at times we have things which are ex extremely worthless and they are of no use to us. And instead of maybe throwing it in the dustbin, we just try to make a point out of it that, well, okay, I'll just give it to someone. Uh, and you know that it's absolutely trash. So, you mean, the other thing which is important from this verse is that don't give trash to other people. Trash is not the right uh, thing to spend. Uh, I mean, you just throw away the, such things. So, if you just gauge these two verses, basically it's that you should not uh, give trash to people which is of no use to them, which you would not accept yourself. And the first thing is that you have to earn money in a manner which is absolutely pure and it does not have any uh, contamination of uh, evil in it. So, thank you for that, uh, Fatima. I, I think you uh, rightly uh, understood what the verse, verses that, uh, had to say. Okay, now we'll move on to the next verse and uh, I think this is something perhaps much more simpler and uh, let me ask Ryan, have you come up with what is the message of the, the second verse? I think the, the, the use of the second verse is that it's telling you that if you help someone once in the uh, once don't annoy them and don't keep reminding them that you got them out of a hard time mm -hmm. because it's basically like asking for something in return so it leads to the point that help people for the good of helping them not so you get something in return okay uh, that's a good point that you made and Alicia would you like to add or any anything that you'd not agree with in this case this <laughs> Yes, I think it means to like not rem constantly remind people that you help them. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, obviously the translation is is uh, very simple and as is the verse itself. So the second etiquette of spending in the way of God, as you have rightly pointed out, and I think you would all agree, is that uh, if you start reminding people of the good that you did to them in the past, it ruins your own spending. And uh, you see, you, you, you spend, you are charitable, uh, not to make a point and not to uh, make them understand at a later point in time that you have been charitable to them. And maybe if you had a difference of opinion now, 
you are reminding the person the, that what you did for him or her in the past. So this is not a very good thing to do. It's against decency that you do something and you start imposing yourself as you did a great favor to that person. So never uh, ever think that if you've done a favor to a person, you need to keep on constantly pestering him with what you did because as you would know that you, when you spend something or you help someone out, it is ba basically to please God and that you have done. But when you do these things, it's more of meanness, uh, which of course we should avoid. So thank you uh, for uh, this input. And we now move on to the third verse. And the third verse, as you can see, is <clears throat> again something which is perhaps uh, a very simple in its uh, import. And uh, so I'd like to ask Fatima and Ariba, either of you, if you maybe Fatima or maybe Ariba, if you could let us know what the third verse has for us. So basically, it says that you should spend openly, but secretly is better. Because like it just shows that you can spend, but like you're not showing it to anyone. It's not. It's not for like showing off, or it's not for showing that you're kind. It's just for your own self. Okay. And plus, mm -hmm. the whole thing. So is that Fatima? Yeah. And Ariba, do you agree with your sister? Yes, I do. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So the two of you think that basically. The verse is telling us that we should not boast our spending, we should not show off uh, our spending, uh, although this is something which we can derive, but what the verse is actually telling us is that if you can spend openly or maybe you spend in secret, of course, openly would mean that you spend in front of people. Uh, of course, the, the purpose of spending in front of people so that they know what you're doing, would one of, one of the intentions should be or one of the reasons would be that you'd like to inspire them that they too do this but look what the quran says that in uh, if it is it is better that you spend in private and you don't show off your spending because this is what is required your own spiritual self if it does something for people uh, and that person would like to i mean brag about what he did or what she did uh, that would actually lose the uh, the influence and the, the effect and the benefits of spending it's uh, but if you do it secretly, look what the verse says that you kafir ankum sayyatikum that God will actually wipe out your sins because this is how God compensates for good acts. So yes, uh, you're right in that that it's spending in open or spending in something which is not known to people. Both are, are acceptable, but more acceptable is that you spend it secretly, and no one knows except you and God, of course. Okay. So we know now move on to the fourth verse and uh, let me ask Yahya, yeah, what, what do you make out of this for fourth verse? Your Zirak, what would you say? I think it has to do with being selfless, mm -hmm. that even if you're in need, you're still trying to give preference to others over you. Right. So <clears throat> this is, I think, very simple as the translation says, and this is perhaps simple in, the tra in translation, but the most difficult thing to do, wouldn't you agree? You see, uh, you yourself are in need and if someone comes along and he or she is equally in need and you don't think of your own need and you just give away what you had for your own self, it's not that you had something spare, it's not that you had something which was surplus. On the other hand, you had something which was, you, you needed it very much and here comes someone with some sort of a similar need and out of your own spirit of sacrifice, you just gave it away. And this is the highest form of spending which the Quran has actually pointed out. It says that giving preference to others, sacrificing for others in spite of the fact that you need the money yourself or you need whatever thing that you gave that person away yourself, you just gave it away. And uh, let me tell you this, uh, that I've seen so many people sharing this experience uh, they say that whenever we have done this, on most occasions when we gave away something which we needed very much and which actually we just gave, it, gave to someone uh, and the very next day maybe or in the very near future, somehow or the other, out of nowhere, I mean in an absolutely unexpected way, they received something out of, as I said, as a gift or as a parcel or as something which, we, which had, they had no idea of. 
and uh, it was much more than what they had spent. Of course, the sequence of events would have been that they would have given money to someone or maybe some windfall gain they could have gained or anything that, that, was, that was planned by the Almighty that if a person gives it away, he will compensate uh, magnanimously. So, this is one of the ways that I have seen so many people tell us that if you want to experience God, you cannot see him, you cannot touch him, but you can experience God and his favors and his reward if you spend something and just give it away while you are in need and you will find that God has somehow made it up to you in a larger way. So, try this out sometime and maybe you have the same experience as well. So, thank you for that and so let's move on to the next verse. Uh, the next verse says, uh, let me just switch the, the page, this is the fifth verse, says that yunfiquna uh, Okay, I think this too is a very simple message and uh, let me ask Zara if you could, if you could let us know what you think about it. Zara Bernie. Um, so, I think that it relates to the last verse a lot, again with the selflessness. Um, and it's just basically saying how you should always give mm -hmm. no matter the circumstance that you're in. Um, and I kind of thought of it as the saying, you give and you get. Mm -hmm. And so you should always continue giving no matter what circumstance you're faced with. Okay. And in fact, these circumstances have been pointed out by the words itself. That they, they spend when they, when they are poor and they spend when they are in any spot of bother. So, regardless of the fact, and you write about that, that it is related to the previous verse, the only thing is that this particular verse has, uh, has more explanation, uh, has an, uh, the ring of uh, the explanatory part that whether you are people uh, who, who are in restricted circumstances or you are people who are in ease. So, Sarah and Zara are two opposites. Uh, so, you don't, you have the same attitude. I mean, when you were rich, you were still spending and when somehow you were short in funds, even then you had the, the same inclination and you would just not look at how much, how, how your own circumstances were. The only thing is whatever you had, you thought that you will present it. When you were rich, you give more. When you were poor or restricted in your circumstance, in your, in your finances, you still gave maybe less. But then again, the point is not less or more. The point is that you still gave and I think it is a beautiful message. Uh, that we have received uh, uh, in, in this verse. Okay, the sixth verse. So, can I ask Ali, what do you think is the, is the message of the sixth verse? So, spend in the name of Allah, like what you want and not something useless. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you are right about that. You see, uh, what, what the Almighty wants us that once in a while, we spend something that we really like very much. I mean, all most of the time we spend what is surplus, what is extra, what we can afford besides our own needs. However, there is one, one area in which God says that if you really like come close to me, then spend what is most dear and cherishable to you. For example, there could be something that you like a lot, maybe a watch, maybe a computer, maybe, maybe any gadget, maybe a cell phone maybe a money, some money that you have saved up. So, every once in a while, uh, if you could do that, if we could do this, we have, we have to have some courage in this and of course, this courage can only be mustered if we have a very close relationship with God uh, that we think that these things are all temporary. One day, all of us are going to be deprived of these things when we go away. It is the, the character and the way that we conduct ourselves regarding these things that would count ultimately in the hereafter. And one way to really fare well before God is to spend some of our some of our belongings, maybe, or some of our wealth, which is really very, very cherished, cherishable to us, which we dearly hold close to us. So it could be anything that you hold close to you. Try this sometime. Although it's not an obligation, of course, it's just like becoming a high achiever in in, in charity. If you want to become a high achiever uh, in becoming charitable, so just as we just read up earlier on that give when you are in need as well, sacrifice, be selfless. So, there is another thing which is a, the second extreme or the other extreme that you are not, you're not, you're not giving something uh, because you need it, you are giving something because you love it a lot. 
because you really like that thing. So when you part ways with something which you, when you like a lot, it's like, of course, it's another form of sacrifice. And when you do that, you actually tell God that the, the, the love of God is greater to you than the love of that thing. And that's, that is a really supreme feeling. And when it gets into you, you feel spiritually elevated. So do try this, folks, once in a while, and you'll feel uh, what I've just tried to describe. Because so many people who do this, they, they share this experience. And of course, Quran itself has told us uh, regarding this as well. Okay, so we will move on to the seventh verse. And uh, uh, okay, Fatima and Ariva. So, would you would you share what you d uh, wrote or understood from the seventh verse, Fatma? So basically, whatever you spend is for your parents, for the orphans, and for your loved ones. Okay, so so what what is the message basically? I mean, when you say that is what you spend is for your parents or your loved ones, what exactly do you think the verse is telling us? So basically, you spending it, it, it benefits the orphan that you're spending it to, and it also benefits the people that are around you because, like, you're spending it to also get good deeds and um, get, like, mm -hmm. you know, get um, a good, like, benefit from it. So the benefit would go to your parents or your loved ones. Okay, Nida, what do you what do you make out of it? We just uh, studied. This is the seventh one, which says that uh, you have to sp when you spend on your near ones, the people who are your parents, your kinsfolk, etc. What exactly is the is the uh, underlying theme of this verse, which which you can gauge while you read the verse? It's about being selfless, giving to others what you cherish. Okay. And it's. Okay, let me just yeah. make it a little easier for you all because this is slightly <clears throat> a different at, uh, thing that you might have not might not have encountered early. And actually, what this verse is saying is that the charity that you give, that the the thing that you spend on others, the first recipients or the foremost recipients, they are your parents. So you see, this is a whole different concept of charity that the Quran gives. Usually we think that the charity is something that has to be given to the poor or charity is something which people who need or charity is something which is there. If, uh, if, if someone is there and he or she is in severe want, but this is what not what the Quran says. The Quran says that the first recipient of charity are your parents and your kinsfolk and then it says the traveler and those, those who are in need, which of course means that your parents, if you have uh, money to give them, don't think that this is something uh, that you don't cannot give out of charity. Charity in itself is, as you can see, the word is uh, the word is charitable. To to be generous, to be to think of others, and what better uh, a, a re relationship than your own parents? Because they are the ones who have actually given birth to you. They are the ones who have sacrificed for you. They are the ones who have developed and grown and, and nurtured you and, and did all kinds of sacrifices. So I, 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 that's why I wanted to clarify this and look how the Quran views charity that the first, the first recipient of your charity is someone from your own home. And if they are in need, of course, it's all the more reason. But even if they are not in need, then don't think that this is something that you cannot give to your own parents. So I think this is a very important thing that we often overlook vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Quran and the Quran has just not restricted charity to, to people who are needy but to people who are your kinsfolk, the people who are your closest blood relations. Okay, we now move on to the eighth verse folks and uh, I, li I like Azan, if you could just let us know what you understood from the eighth verse. I think this verse is um, telling us that uh, when you're spending, it's um, basically if the you can um, those men who are uh, the ignorant men mm -hmm. who are worthy of the account of the model's behavior. I don't really understand this one. Okay, this is slightly uh, it, it warrants a little explanation, and I'll I'll try to help you out with this. You see, what it says is that at times there are people who are stranded or they are caught up 
uh, whilst pursuing their livelihood, whilst uh, uh, working for the cause of God. And outwardly, they would seem very well dressed. Uh, as the verse says, Yasabuhum al Jahilu Agniya Amin at Tarafuf. That people would see that they are, I mean, they are they are living in a very uh, in, a, in a very fairly comfortable way, and therefore they are not the ones uh, who need any help. But if you look deeper down, you'll find that outwardly they are very dignified. They outwardly they appear to be very very well set. But a little closer look uh, would make you realize that well they are in very in a spot of bother. They are in straitened circumstances, and. Uh, look what the verse says, Tarifuhum bisimahum. If you look at their face deeply, you'll find them that although they look to be very well dressed, they look to belong to reasonably good families, they look to be well off, but because they don't beg, layas alunun nasa ilhafa, they don't insistently beg, you think, well, they're okay. So the, the, the message that this particular very important verse is giving us is that look for people who are not asking you. But they are in need because people who are, who are in need are of two types. One of them, they literally ask you. And the other of them, the other, other, uh, other, other type of such people is that they are so, I mean, they have self-esteem. They have uh, self-dignity in them that they would not ask for money. They would not ask for help. It is our duty to reach to such people. These are the white-collared people who actually might look to be very well set in life, but in fact, they, if you go closer to them, you might see that they don't have enough money to maybe pay the bills or to send their children to school in, in, on, in, on a good school, etc. So don't be deceived by the looks. It's not always people who appear to, be, to have disheveled hair or have tattered clothes who are in need. At times, people who are well dressed, who are well set seemingly, uh, they are because of the fact that they have tremendous self honor and self respect. Uh, that they don't uh, start off, start off uh, uh, begging people, but in fact they have a very very different uh, situation as far as their homes are concerned. So this, as I said, is something that we often overlook, and therefore this is how the Quran has reminded us. Okay, uh, the ninth verse, Sir okay, Fatma Hussain. What you what do you make out of the ninth verse? It basically says that you should be mindful of how you spend your wealth. Mm -hmm. And if uh, you're not careful, that you may be reduced to poverty. Like God will take away what He has given you. So it says, "Be neither miserly nor nor wasteful, uh, for then you should earn reproach or be reduced to poverty." So I think you 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 rightly pointed out what the verse is actually telling us that you have to be moderate in our spending. I mean, it should not be either marred with miserliness, which is stinginess, and you don't spend anything, you just start collecting money and uh, just keep it to yourself. This is one extreme. And the other extreme is that you keep on uh, your spending and uh, you're wasteful in your spending. So this verse is telling us to be moderate in our spending, neither miserly nor wasteful. And I think this is the beauty of uh, the, 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 our whole religion that in most cases it tells us to be moderate in our approach because extremes of course are something which are not uh, wanted at all by God. So thank you for that Fatima. Okay, so uh, the 10th verse, I mean, now we are heading towards the end. So the 10th verse which is uh, the 28th verse of Surah Bani Israel and uh, could I ask uh, Alicia, could you, could you share us what you think about this verse? That if you're not thankful for what you already have, or if you like waste your money, you would like um. No, we got we talking about the tenth. Just, we're talking about the tenth verse. But if while waiting for your Lord's grace, you lack the means to assist these needy, then at least speak to them kindly. Also, like if you don't have the money to donate to like the poor or the homeless, that you should treat them with respect and like treat them as equals. Uh, slightly more than that. So it says that you have to be kind to them. Don't talk back or don't scold such people. You see, when you don't have money at times or you, you don't have enough to spare and to spend on others and when other people kept, keep pestering you, keep bothering you uh, for, for money or they ask you. So what you, we, we tend to get irritated. 
And this verse tells us that, well, if you, you are not able to contribute, if you are not able to donate, if you are not able to help someone, then at least be polite to that person. Don't tick him off. Don't scold that person. Just tell them in, in very polite words that you are not able to help that person. So remember, a word of kindness is very important if you have to refuse, refuse someone. So that is another etiquette of charity. Often we get irritated by people who pester us, who, who ask us, especially when we don't have the means to, to help him or her. So it is here that we have to be, we have to practice self-restraint. We have to be patient and smile at these people and politely tell them, well, at the moment, I'm not able to help you. I'm very sorry. Maybe in future, inshallah, I'll be able to do so. So be polite in your refusal. To be polite in one's refusal is the basic message uh, of this verse. Okay, we are coming up to the last two uh, verses. And uh, so this is, okay, verse 11 and 12. Uh, okay, I'm now going to ask, uh, let me see. So Zara, Zara Bernie? Yes. Is it the 11th? Yeah, it's the 11th one. So what I kind of interpreted from this is that even if shaitan threatens you with poverty and all of these bad things upon you, mm -hmm. you should continue giving because that is a good thing to do and that is what Allah wants you to do. Even if you... Um, even if you're threatened with poverty, it goes back to, I think, uh, the fifth verse, um, even in richness and poorness, mm -hmm. you should always give to. Okay. Poverty. So this is, uh, this is, uh, so another color or another shade, which has been added to that fifth verse is that you see one of the reasons, uh, that makes you stop spending or that makes you withhold yourself is. That you think, oh, well, you, if you give away, you'll become poor yourself. So this is one of the weapons of Satan. What he does is that he, he threatens you that, oh, well, you give away your wealth. What will you have? You'll not be able to save money for your own self. And when you are in a, in, in a problem or in some hardship, you'll have nothing. So one of the fears of not spending uh, on other people is this, is, this, is this fear that I'll become poor. I'll become a needy myself if I don't spend. So it is here that uh, the Quran tells us that don't look, don't get enticed by Satan when he tells you this or when you have this thought, because remember that when you give it, give other people, uh, it's going to be compensated by God uh, much more than you can even imagine. If not in this world, then maybe in the next world. So never get bogged down by these thoughts that if I give away my money, then maybe I be end up becoming poor and uh, recipient of money from others. So this is what the Quran tells us that don't pay any heed, don't lend any air to these thoughts when they come to your mind that uh, you lose money and end up in, in poverty if you keep on spending on others. So thank you for that. Uh, okay, the last verse and for this last verse, uh, <clears throat> I, I would like to, uh, instead of naming someone, can I have a volunteer who would like to explain this last verse? Any one of you? It's by spending, uh, in, uh, I think by spending the wealth uh, in the name of Allah, uh -huh. uh, you know, often would result in right. no fear or you would not really feel miserable and sad uh -huh. as you if you don't. So Zirak, you are very close. Uh, the message which the verse is uh, giving us is basically in the form of an idiom. When you say, don't do this day and night. It's like encompassing that you're doing it all the time. So the verse says, Allazina yunfikuna amwalahum bil wa nahar sirram wa alaniya. They are the people who are spending by day and by night, by publicly and secretly. So it's like encompassing all forms of spending. And it says that they are people who are on the lookout for spending. They don't wait for people to come to them. They reach out to others. They are, they are always on the go. So the words Lail wa Nahar, which, is, which are translated by day and night, they are basically an idiom which tells us as we use, well, you're doing this thing day and night. If I tell you that you are at your computer day and night, of course, it doesn't mean by day and night. It means all the time you're doing something uh, which I would like to stop you from. This is how we use this, this phrase, this idiom. So in a very similar way, the Quran says that these are the people who day, by day and by night, which means that all the time, every time that you see them, they are 
actively involved in spending and they don't wait for people to come to them. They find people who are in need and who are in stress. So basically, the verse is telling us that you have to be on the lookout. Be proactive in charity. Don't wait that people come to you and ask. You try and go and find out people or charities or various other options because this is how a believer's life should be. He or she should always be thinking of ways uh, regarding helping other people, regarding uh, presenting whatever we can to make to bring a smile on the faces of other people and to bring happiness in their lives. So, thank you very much, my dear friends. You've done a wonderful job in explaining these 12 verses. And uh, the, of course, uh, hopefully, inshallah, the, the message of these verses will be uh, will remain in your mind. And uh, uh, I do hope that we will continue with this, uh, this, this attitude of revisiting these verses, especially some of the ones that you might have heard for the first time. And now let us uh, go uh, come to the uh, to the, the second question vis-a-vis uh, -vis the comprehensive and this is a very simple one and that is make a list of charity organizations that you know. So all of you are living in different parts of the world. So very quickly I'm just going to ask each of you uh, who just out of the top of their head could maybe uh, share the charity organizations that they are they, that they know. They could be in any part of the world but they are, have knowledge because this would tell and this would show that you are entrusted and how uh, informed are you regarding charitable organizations. So, uh, Azan, can I start off with you? Could you just name a few charity organizations? I don't know any one of them. Okay, that's fine. You can maybe oh, benefit sorry. from what the rest of the people will tell us. Uh, what about Zirak? Would you share something? I think the SOS organization. Right. So, and the SOS is found all over the world, I believe. Okay, Fatima and Ariba. The Smith family, the Salvation Army and Lifeline. Okay, that's very good. Thank you. And Yahya. Okay, Ali, what about you? Uh, Salvation Army and Red Cross. Right. Red Cross is a very good, it's, it's, a, it's a worldwide organization. So, thank you for pointing that out. Fatima Hussain. The Ely Foundation. The Ely Foundation, that of course is something which is very prominent. So, thank you, Fatima, for that. And uh, Nida, anything that, that strikes you? Yeah. Uh, UNICEF? UNICEF, yes, that is another. So, what does, it, what does UNICEF stand for? United Nations is UN. What else? Anyone knows what UNICEF stands for? United Nations Children's Fund. Children's Emergency Fund. So, it's UNICEF. The E stands for emergency. Thank you for, very much for that. Okay, so it's Ryan. Ryan, what any charity that comes to your mind? Um, World Food Program. World Food Program. Okay, uh, Zara. Feeding America. Feeding America. Uh, Zirak. Uh, come again. I said uh, SOS before, but I think. Uh, you, okay, you already said that. Okay. And, and what about Zoya? Uh, there's Walk for Water. Walk for Water. Yeah. Okay. So, actually, the purpose of this exercise was just to sharpen your wits and your skills vis a vis charity organizations. Do, uh, whenever you come across newspapers or re you're reading your. Uh, anything in, uh, on the social media uh, just try to keep a track of these organizations because remember they are they are people who are helping humanity and we need more people to help humanity we need more concerned people we know we need more sympathy because as you would be knowing that almost 30 percent of the world is living below the poverty line which means that they don't have basic necessities of life which include food water shelter health education all these things so Keep track of these people and whenever you can, uh, of these organizations as well, and whenever you can spare money or maybe any skill or anything that you can donate, maybe in the form of things that you have at your home, uh, do uh, make it a point uh, to do so because uh, remember it's, it's humanity which is at stake, humanity which calls you and we are one family, all of us, we are citizens of the globe and of course, People who are closer to you may be living in your vicinity, in your country, in your city. They might have more right on you. 
but that doesn't mean that we shut our eyes to the rest of the world. And remember, one part of us is a member of the country that we live in, and the other part of us is the whole globe of which we are a part. And so, therefore, we have to think about others and look how these charities work. I would, I, I, I'd ask you to look up, for example, the Bill Gates, found, the Bill, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the way they are working uh, for famine-stricken people and some of the diseases that have, they have eliminated in, uh, in Africa. The Rothschild Foundation is a huge charity which is working all over the world. So just, just, just keep a track of these charities and whenever you can, do donate for their cause and see what best you can do. We just had a very huge earthquake in Turkey uh, last, uh, I mean this was just the day before yesterday and you know how many lives were lost. So if you can do something for their cause, wherever you are sitting, even if it's a very small amount, uh, it's always welcome. So thank you very much for that. And so, before we move on to the last part of our uh, of our today's program, which is in fact the quiz, there is this question that I actually placed, and basically, I'd like to explain it to you myself. It was addressed, uh, of, although although to all of you, but uh, uh, I'd like to make this point because, of course, this is this is a huge misconception which is found uh, amongst many Muslims, and one of these uh, one of these grave concerns that we have is that many mis Muslims think that the the charity that we spend can only be spent on Muslims. So therefore, they would not donate to non-Muslim charitable organizations or at times they would not donate to non-Muslim person who might, people who might be sick or who might be needing your help. So just wanted to dispel this absolutely baseless notion and uh, any one of you who would disagree with me, I would like to of course hear you out and respect your wishes as well. But I just like to present to you my own view here is that uh, if you've heard anything vis-a-vis -vis religion telling us that we cannot give zakat or charity or any help to uh, non-Muslims, then this is not something which is supported by the Quran or by any of the sayings of our Prophet. Just as you can donate money to Muslims for any purpose, you can do so for to all non-Muslims. So th the bottom line here is that you disregard the faith of a person when you're helping him or her. That is not the question. Uh, that you need to give weight to while you're spending on other people because this is something which is humanitarian in nature. It's not religious in nature, it's more humanitarian in nature and humanity at large is uh, something which we have to be concerned of, not regarding uh, the, the beliefs that they have. So this is just one point that I wanted to clarify and I'd be, I'd really be welcome, I mean welcome any difference of opinion if any one of you would have uh, and respect it of course, but in case you have, if you think that there is something to it that you'd like to share, uh, I, I, I would be welcoming any comments that you might have on this. A question that you have, because you see this is how we have been fed by our parents and by our society that charity or zakat or uh, sadaka or anything which relates to giving people must be given if they are Muslims. Okay. Even if you want, don't want to share uh, or maybe you agree, that is fine. But in case you think you have a disagreement, if you don't want to share it, maybe uh, on this forum, you can even write to me or discuss it with me. Uh, my purpose was to just to clarify this misconception. Okay, we now come to the last part of our uh, session and this is something of a uh, quiz that we uh, started uh, the last time as well. So these are 10 comprehension questions vis-a-vis uh, -vis charity. So I'd like you to attempt them honestly uh, by think by imagining yourself to be uh, the the addressee of the question. So start on now. start off now. These are ten questions, and please take not more than five minutes in answering them, and then we'll just have a small evaluation of what you have done. So start off now, please. So, I am now just going to give you the marking scheme of the quiz that you have just attempted. Remember, you have to be very honest and imagine yourself uh, in, uh, in the place of that uh, person who is being discussed in a particular question. So, question number one. So, those who have ticked the first option should give themselves 10 marks. Those who have ticked and those who have ticked the third option should give themselves zero. Question number two. The first option has 10 marks. The second has 10. The third has 0 and the fourth has 1. Question number 3. The first option has 8 marks, the second has 0, the third has 5 and the fourth has 10. Question number 4. The first has 10, the second has 7, 
the third has two, the fourth has one, and the fifth has zero. Question number five, the first option carries zero, the second has five, and the third has ten. Question number six, the first has a zero, the second has a ten, the third has eight, and the fourth has five marks. Question number seven, the first has zero, the second has minus five, the third has six, the fourth has ten. Question number eight, the first has ten, the second has a zero, the third has ten, the fourth has zero. And, the, and question, sorry, this was question number nine. So I'll just repeat question number nine. Uh, the first has uh, 10, the second has zero, the third has 10, and the fourth has zero. Okay. And the last question, the first has 10, the second option has a zero, and the third option has minus 10. Okay, so thank you very much. So you see, the purpose was to uh, just make you more sensitive towards these questions, and maybe you can review them later on. But people who have scored between uh, 60 and 70, they, are, they can classify themselves to be good as far as charity is concerned. Those who have scored between 70 and 80 are very good. Those who have scored between 80 and 90 are excellent. And the, those who have scored between 90 and 100 are exceptional. So this is a general overview of how charitable you are today. And those of you who have scored less than 60, they don't, don't need to be worried. Uh, they can just reassess themselves and see that if they have to become more charitable in future and more generous and more giving, uh, they can maybe review some of the things that they have uh, scored less in and try to overcome them. As I said, the purpose is, not, is basically to give you a, a general self-evaluation of how charitable you are in, in the natural sense. Uh, and now, of course, you can now work on your uh, shortcomings if you want to be or charitable, it will give you a glimpse of how you are from inside. And as I said, it's always a, a good assessment that, that, that makes us work on our flaws and our shortcomings. The purpose is not to point out uh, the shortcoming, but the for the purpose of uh, pointing it out, but the purpose is to point out any shortcomings that you can easily overcome in future and go to a higher grade and become a high achiever. So, thank you very much, my dear friends, that uh, for attending this, this, this session. Uh, inshallah, we'll be back next uh, week with a different topic, uh, and we have some different types of discussion, but I do hope that you enjoyed participating. I enjoyed very much listening to you. Thank you very much once again. So, see you on uh, next Sunday. Until then, it is Khuda Hafiz from your teacher.